you're you're reminding us that uh, there's there's uh, two biological systems on both ends of that communication. Yeah. The one, the easier, I guess, maybe half as difficult thing to do, and the hope with Neuralink is that we can communicate with an AI system. So yeah. where one side of that is a little bit yeah. more controllable, but but even just that is is exceptionally difficult. Like, Let's like talk about two, two new neuronal systems talking to each other. Suppose that yeah. GPT-4 tells GPT-3, hey, give me all your knowledge, <laughs> yeah. right? It's yeah, ready. That's hilarious. I have 10 times more hardware. I'm ready, just yeah. feed me. Mm -hmm. What's GPT-3 gonna do? Is it gonna say, oh, here's my 10 billion parameters? No. No way. The simplest way, and perhaps the fastest way for GPT-3 to transfer all its knowledge yeah. to, to its older body that has a lot more hardware, is to regenerate every single possible human sentence that it can possibly yes. create. Just keep talking. <laughs> keep talking and just re-encode it all together. So maybe what language does is exactly that. It's taking one generative cognitive model, it's running it forward to emit utterances that kind of make sense in my cognitive frame, mm -hmm. and it's re-encoding them into yours through the parsing of that same language. And I think the conversation might might actually be the most efficient way to do it. So not just talking, but uh, interactive. So talking back and forth, yeah. asking questions, I interrupting. <laughs> so GPT-4 will constantly be interrupting. Inter <laughs> just <laughs> annoying, <laughs> annoying it. Annoyingly. It's, yeah. Uh, but, but, but the amazing. beauty of that is also that as we're interrupting each other, there's all kinds of misinterpretations that happen that, you know, as basically when my students speak, I will often know that I'm misunderstanding what they're saying. And I'll be like, hold that thought for a second. Let me tell you what I think I understood, which I know is different from what you said. Then I'll say that. And then someone else in the same Zoom meeting will basically say, well, you know, here's another way to think about what you just said. And then by the third iteration, we're somewhere completely different that if we could actually communicate with full, you know, neural network parameters back and forth of that knowledge and idea and coding would be far inferior because the re-encoding with our own, as we said last time, emotional baggage and cognitive baggage from our unique experiences through our shared experiences, distinct encodings in the context of all our unique experiences is leading to so much more um, diversity of perspectives. And again, going back to this whole concept of this entire network of all of human cognitive systems connected to each other and sort of how ideas and memes permeate through that, that's sort of what really creates a, a whole new level of human experience mm -hmm. through this reasoning layer and this computational layer that obviously lives on top of our cognitive layer.